Hey everyone, welcome. Um, I wanted to make a little bit of a different video here, um, talking about a concept that um, I feel in some way many of us are, are working with here. And um, it's interesting because, well, we've been talking about this sort of sprucing up release um, sort of tendency or trend that, that we've been in here with the Newman and Scorpio. Um, where I made a few videos talking about how I'm getting rid of a lot of stuff and just really clearing things out and, um, you know, that moment of where we, we just say, yes, you know what, like with sort of finality, um, this is, this is, this is the end of the road and it's time to go, it's time to release and, um, clear out and move on. Um, and, you know, there are those sort of, let's say, crossroads um where we say yes for sure right and 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 you make peace with some part of um maybe that that experience and it can be on an energetic level it could be um metaphorically but um interestingly i had this little experience that i wanted to share with you guys and um i find that it brings light to another aspect of how we find healing in certain experiences so I have this um, piece of jewelry and as I'm, you know, clearing out and getting ready to sort of, um, you know, really like release, you know, m more, more things more deeply in, in relation to what it is that I have, let's say, also experienced or accumulated, um, I came across this one piece of jewelry and... And, and I've been so much in this mode of like, if it doesn't work, just like get rid of it, just like release it, you know, don't try to like finagle it um, and, uh, you know, feel, feel it. And if it doesn't feel right, release it. And I came across yet again, this one piece of jewelry, I had it sort of wound up in this little like sachet. And it was a, um, a really significant actually piece of jewelry for me um, with my twin. I I, uh, I had a particular experience and this piece of jewelry had a certain meaning um, at that time for me. Now, when we had first sort of came come into contact uh, physically. And um, so anyhow, I had taken this, 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 this piece off um, for quite a long time, quite a long period of time. And I had worn that for a really, really long time. So taking that off, I just set it aside, put it away in like this little drawer and little, again, little sachet. And I was like, okay, you know, I don't want to quite get rid of this, but I, I I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to wear it. I don't want to wear it. And that's for sure. So that was a period of time. Um, and, um, I hadn't worn it for years. Now I'm come across it today and 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 for those of you who've been following for quite some time, you know, again, I've been like in this mode of like I was getting rid of things um, you know, a few days ago that I thought I'd never get rid of. And um anyhow, so today I come across this this one necklace and I realize um whoa, it's really knotted. <laughs> like there are, it's complete, it's like in, almost in a ball and it, the chain is so fine on it. Um, it's, um, it, it's almost like you look at it, it feels impossible. Like, how am I going to get this out? Right? So I'm looking at this thing. I'm like, okay, you know what? Well, what, let me, let me try. I've tried before a few times and it just didn't have, I, so I was like, okay, I'm going to put it aside. Get like, um, this really fine, like pair of scissors out. Um, and uh, you know the, the ones that you sort of can um you know groom you know hair hair with like on the face very fine scissors i take up a, a single pair out and i'm like sort of poking at the chain like trying to get it like to loosen up um and i'm kind of like poking and darting in these random sort of points of, the, <laughs> of, of this like you know matted ball of chain and uh and i'm you know like in the beginning i'm like okay well maybe maybe you can kind of it was getting lo looser and looser now i'm seeing four or four right there on the clock whatever that may mean for Renovrio. but i was like poking poking and i'm like oh, okay it's like kind of getting looser but it's not really um fully unraveling and i was like okay i had this really high expectation right and i'm feeling heat in the body growing here so i don't know again what that might be alluding to for a number of you but now I'm like poking and poking, keep trying, and at a certain point I'm getting kind of annoyed. I start like yanking at the chain. I poke it in the middle of the of the of the matted ball, and I'm like, okay, I almost like try and like kind of pull it apart, like, okay, like come on, work already. Now the two ends of this chain are actually unhinged from one another. So they're sort of loose bits of chain. Naturally, when I would wear the necklace, obviously they would be, you know, connected. Um, and obviously, right, when I was wearing the necklace, when I had met my twin, the two ends of the necklace 
we're connected. So just possibly on a metaphor, symbolic, energetic level, you know, take it as you will. When I had had this, like when I realized, okay, well, you know, I'm not going to be wearing this for, you know, you know, any, any longer here, I undid the ends of the chain and, um, you know, in trying to sort of eventually bring them back together, un undid the two ends of the chain, um, because it would have been most likely much more difficult to, um, you know, to, to undo it. Now, anyhow, so I'm like poking and poking and poking and I'm yanking and yanking at a certain point. I'm like, I think I'm just going to throw this away. Like at a certain point I was like, it's just, you know, should I just release this completely? Like just get rid of this piece of jewelry, not try to sort of, you know, so-called resolve, um, the 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 the, the, the dissonance the re the resonance of dissonance that I'm feeling that's how I can describe it now at a certain point I was like oh, okay I took a deep breath I'm like no I'm not getting rid of this all right um you know let me let me try this so I take another pair of scissors so I take two scissors at this point okay and I'm starting to almost like weave them together into the ball, right? Like one, one with the other. Now, um, you know, I'm trying to yank them and, and trying to sort of aggressively sort of, um, you know, sort of, sort of get them to, 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 to clear, to clear their eyes with one another. I'm hearing it in that way. You know, it, it was not, it was not happening. So the only way that I could get it really to sort of try to loosen up a bit was to sort of um, feed them in at different angles and very gently and slowly sort of, um, you know, in a, in a balanced way um, to pull them apart and in different ways now and I'm hearing almost anonymously so you know the tension was way too much to get this knot out with just one pair of scissors and with two it was actually um, much more much much more um, seamless now so at a certain point I realized well um, you know fighting with 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 one with one pair of scissors and one chain is not going to work <laughs> and two ends of a, lo of a loose necklace um, fighting with two scissors and two loose ends also of a necklace chain is also not going <laughs> to, to completely resolve, um, depending on, you know, your knot and whatever else, um, you know, the, 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 the fineness of the, your, of, of your chain, whatever it is, and the pendant, of course, that is dropped, um, um, uh, upon it, but, um, you know, it's all subjective and it will be dependent on your experience, but, um, I'm hearing here in life on earth, um, and of course your perception of it, you know, who am I as the one who is also undoing perceptively, proverbially the chain. So take it as you will. <laughs> um, you know, but you know, it was very interesting. Um, and let's clear the energy, um, and ground. It's like, you know, what it, what is it that exactly you know we are creating and the question becomes more of how do we approach this um from that same perspective of you know in other words if i see myself creating something in such a way right it's like i have to look at the necklace as um what it is right it has like two two loose ends to it just because i want to undo it and put it back together you know at the end of the day we have to think we have to put these two ends of the necklace together so if we think of it symbolically right it's like we have to approach it in the same way if there is something so called wrong with with that, um, with that space. So, you know, there is this, uh, philosophy even in medicine where it's like, you treat it with, um, what is it? The, the cause, like the, the, you, you can treat the ailment with the cause of the ailment, something of that. Uh, I don't forget the name but exactly, but there's something, you know, similar to that where, um, you know, you, you go to the root as well of it. So trying to like treat the symptoms is not really usually going to work. So, um, anyhow, that tends to be my philosophy in general, um, even with uh, healing and medicine, things like that, right? Because you can so-called eradicate a symptom, um, but it's not going to really get to the root of of, and it may just happen again, right? So anyways, um, you know, looking at it from this perspective of saying, okay, well, I cannot force, right? It's unrealistic almost to think that, you know, also I'm trying to, you know, just sort of... Um, get them both to sort of resolve, like get, get both of the ends of this, of this chain. And it could be a money as well, um, to sort of, uh, unravel themselves just sort of naturally. Um, there is sort of patience. There is also though, um, 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 perseverance, but in such a way that it's tempered and balanced. So, you know, it's not like I keep fighting to try and make my point, right? So that doesn't work. I'm here, it, you know, it, I was really trying to get this thing to undo itself by just sort of, you know, okay, I'm, I'm just going to like try to make it work. Now, the only way that I could af af finally get this thing to come undone was to take my time, first of all, but also to work on one end of the chain at a time consciously.
without focusing on the other simultaneously. So taking this sort of approach where I'd say, okay, well, let me just try to see like where this one end of this one chain is at, right? Let me like try and just work with that, work with that one piece and see where it needs to go, what it needs to unravel um, in relation to that end of the story as well, rather than trying to like also judge it based on the other end of the spectrum where I say, well, I'm going to take this action in relation to the action that they take, right? So when we look at the concept also of twin flame love and apply that to anything that you experience here, right? In, on earth, what is the role that unconditional love does play in that space, right? When we look at a certain experience, we say, well, it's not working. How do we, how do we fathom? And what at the end, that's why we say, right? Like, we'll look at the end of the spectrum and say, well, if that were to resolve, you know, what is the point of the twin flame connection even? Whatever that might resemble for you. So if it is like unconditional love, if you look at the space, you say, well, at the end of the day, like I do want to experience this experience of unconditional love and that's what I ultimately would extend. Then why would I approach this space of resolving whatever has come in between that? in any other way? Why would I not apply to the same space? What it is that I seek to experience um, of it later down the line. So, you know, there is like this feeling possibly of, well, how do I say also what I feel? And how do I do what I feel is right in the way that that feels real for me? And sometimes we have to just go in thinking just about how we feel in that space, giving to a certain experience what we feel is also the highest point without worrying, you know, well, how will they respond? How will they react? How what will what will the reaction be to that? And what steps are they taking, let's say, even on their healing journey in relation to this experience? So I rarely talk about Twin Flame in such a clear way, but I really had such a very clear vision here. And I wanted to share that with you guys because it is something that I that I have experienced, that I experience, and that you know I feel is, um, is, is really telling and teaching in a lot of ways. And that's regardless. I'm not saying that that's, a, oh, well, you have to have a Twin Flame love and it has to manifest in a 3D material you know, way of what a relationship looks like. But just to say that if you look at some experience, if you look Look at the twin flame experience as a healing journey. What is it that I also uh, place on that experience as a value and a vibration of unconditional love? And how is that reflected in my own relationship with myself? That healing vibration. So, uh, you know, and also in reflecting what I bring to this world. Um, you know, what is the purpose of, of having an experience that holds such a vibration that is so unconditionally met? Um, you know, and when we look at it from that perspective, there's no like, I need this to work, right? There's no, I need, I need it, period. There is just the essence of it. And that's enough. So if you say, well, I am reflected in that space, you feel like, well, you're ex experiencing some kind of experience that is re related to that vibration, right? It's like, then why would it be anything other than that? Right. So um, I think there is really this need to understand how we may judge ourselves or others in that space that we ultimately feel at the end of the day, it is about unconditional love. All right. So um, anyhow, I at a certain point, I could only focus on one end of the spectrum at a time and I could not try and will <laughs> both ends of the necklace to work you know, at the same time in the exact same way to say, well, you both need to unravel in the same way at the same time. You know, that's life. And there's so many stages of so many experiences, so many different experiences, so many stages of so many different experiences that we have and we hold that give light and give way to eventually, right? In these ways, we may not be able to very clearly define or delineate the long-term perspective, right? The project value. Sometimes we have to go through life and we say, well, I don't see where this leads. I don't know where this goes. I don't know how they will react. And that's part of the way that it will become. I'm here for a number of you, my story. I'm here for a number of you, my history and time. So yeah, it was, um, so actually beautiful. Like this whole experience, I was like, okay, like once I had one end and I was working with that one end and just kind of following it as a thread, right? As a sort of story as well and telling in a way that felt natural, like on, on, on doing what has been done. And I was hearing actually karma as I was doing that, as I was unraveling the necklace, it was like these little knots here and there. I've talked actually before about even like knots in hair and my sister, so funny. She's like, Nat, like, I feel like I could tell your mood, like with, you know, what's going on. 
based on what your hair <laughs> is doing on that day. And it's funny, I do feel that there may be something to that, but um, you know, yeah, knots and ties, very interesting. But anyways, uh, symbolically speaking, right? But in any, in any other way, what is a symbol? But yes, um, you know, and why would we give attention or meaning to a symbol, right? If it were just uh, that. So I don't know, take as you will, it's very interesting to contemplate. But um, anyhow, yeah, so I got like, finally one end was becoming sort of, you know, was getting looser and looser. And then I would go in and, and sort of, um, and then, you know, sort of indirectly work with the other end of the necklace, like with the other pair of scissors and, you know, kind of just weave it and, and, and to work it out on its own and then come back to the other end of the necklace. And it was without needing to say like, okay, okay, face each other in the mirror and that there is that focus and need to figure it out in that moment in relation to one another. There's no need for that. There's no pressure to do that. And that is a message that's coming through really clearly here. I don't know, felt guided to jump on and really hound this concept through. Um, you know, just because we feel that there is a very significant connection here, um, it's not, um, it's, 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 it's interesting because interestingly, even if something is so, so real and so, let's say we say valuable, in our world even as the space of holding it as an experience that maybe we, we 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 hold you know relationship to as a memory in terms of memory um on on an energetic level in in in, in such a way that is related again to memory um you know Ooh. Um, and I'm hearing also the impression space and what, what, what does that hold? I'm seeing someone who had an impression and that was very significant for them in some way. Um you know it does not necessarily mean that we must value that passion, I'm hearing it as well in that way, on a material plane in the way of saying that it must uh, be, um, I'm hearing, uh, I'm hearing, um, I'm hearing, ooh, I'm hearing vortex. I'm hearing freedom. I'm hearing free, free, freely. I'm hearing freely expressed, actually. I'm hearing that as well. So let's clear it one second. Yeah, there's something that actually, well, in order to manifest the potential of this space, it would be unrealistic to say, to hold this necklace up and say, you know, fix it and fix it now. That is unrealistic. And I know some of you are really like, you understand this concept. I know some of you are like, why are we talking about a necklace? Yeah, <laughs> take it as you will. You'll, you'll, you'll get it where you need to get it. I'm here as well in that way. Like, don't put too much pressure on like understanding it and come back to this reading or this video from time to time if you do feel guided. But, you know, there is, um, there is this sensation of, um, you know, not needing to feel um, it in form. In other words, looking at what feels like let's say it's not working out it's just not right and saying well i still feel its potential and its vibration and the highest value that it holds in form without needing to focus on it in that way of saying i need to fix you so in other words every aspect of this experience is natural is part of the natural unfolding the process of it of coming together eventually. And the more that we sort of just allow it to unfold naturally, the more easy and seamless it will be to accommodate the expression that it takes on in every shape and form in that process. So like, let's clear the energy and ground. There is a focus possibly on how we make ends meet so-called. And it's funny that we're using this sort of, this concept of the necklace, um, because that is sort of how we bring it right together around our so-called neck, how we communicate also a mirror in our personal truth interesting because the necklace is held around the throat chakra and even the heart chakra um and leading then up into the third eye so i don't know what that is going to for an overview but um I'm seeing the color pink here. I'm hearing mauve. I'm hearing navy as well for a number of you take as well. I'm not sure what that might be alluding to. Yeah, I'm hearing navy. Let's clear it. Uh, let's clear it. Yeah, so, you know, um, take it step by step. Don't put too much pressure on yourself to also understand what is happening. Um, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, there is um, more, uh, more, more experience to be had in those experiences that we feel we may not entirely have understood even quite yet. And I'm seeing someone like walking into a house they're like i don't really understand what this house means to me right now but i'm willing to explore where the 
the different sides to the story might m might make sense eventually down the line like and it's funny i see someone walking into a house and they're like walking through different rooms in this house and they're kind of just exploring they're they're understanding but not with the intention of understanding love and light to you guys thank you so much for tuning in i hope you're all doing well enjoying this new moon um you know energy it's sort of um his fervent sort of scorpio energy uh, that we're working with just want to make this little video on some afterthoughts love and light